Hi, I'm Becky Mayer, and welcome to Transition Body, Mind, Spirit. That was music by Brendan Sweetman. And we're going to be talking about transitions, how one changes from one thing to another to another in your life. And I like to use the metaphor of triathlon, some things I've, I've been doing for 11 years. First you swim and go to a transition area, then you bike and go to a transition area, and then you run. And the, what a great metaphor for, for life. So Brendan Sweetman, our great guest. This Kia is show more. number two, welcome. Kia ora. Yes. Brendan is so interesting in that he is a body worker in the rolfing, also owns a very successful long time swimming, teaching swimming mm -hmm. uh, to children. And on this show, show number two, he's actually going to demonstrate what his body work does for people on a real human being. So we are really blessed to, to be here. Mm. And uh, just a little encapsulation of uh, your very interesting transitions. As I understand it, you, uh, you have a New Zealand uh, mom, right? And then you, and your, your dad, and mom and dad met in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Then he came to America and is a was a Vanderbilt professor, and that's how you came to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And you've been kind of bouncing back and forth in many ways, in a spiritual way, with your ancestors in New Zealand, and that sculpted you into what you are today. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about something that we barely touched on, your swimming, in your swimming business, mm -hmm. and then we'll get more into your healing business. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, our swim business is actually the oldest swim program in Nashville to date, and uh, we not only teach children how to swim, we teach them how to save their life, and we mean business when we do this. We have the balance of love and toughness put them together, tough love. We have to have that because a lot of kids do not want to, uh, do not want to play part until they get to the point and they trust us and they know that we're there for them and our hearts and our passion is there for every child. And let me tell you a story, if, if I may. Um, we uh, have saved thousands of children's lives, and I'm not just saying this, I'm pulling a number out of the air. This is from testimonies and people that have gotten back to us. Oh. And there's a very special story from, uh, from uh, one of our families, and uh, they were on the beach in Florida. First of all, I must say that um, drowning is the number one leading cause for children five and under. This is why it's serious. It's not a matter of wanting to come. 
It's a matter of necessity. If you're sick and you have to go to the doctor, does the mother or father ask the child, oh, well, do you want to go to the doctor? It's not like that. And once they get over that, they um, start to see and they build strength and they build character in this. Then they start to uh, really, really enjoy it. Um, but there was a young child and he was two years old. When you have a lot of children, sometimes children can be missing. At the beach in Florida, they are. Hmm. And um, this child, uh, two years old, mm -hmm. missing. And this happens all the time. Hmm. Children drowned in their own swimming pools with their parents in the pool with them. Hmm. This is, it's, wow. it's, it's quite shocking on how often this happens. So this child is uh, missing. Nobody knows where this child is. Four hours go hmm. by. Wow. They called the search off. They'd search and rescue out looking for this child. Hmm. And um, we teach children how to save their life, how to float. And on day mm -hmm. four, they have to float on their back for 30 to 40 minutes around and the neck. How old are these kids? Some of them are two. Some of them are two three. Two years old? Yeah. Three years old? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they called, the, they called the search off. Mm -hmm. And they found this child in the ocean floating on his back. Wow. And, it, it, you know, in a similar, similar ana analogy to this is when they had the big, uh, uh, all the storms and all the, uh, um, the nuclear stuff that went on in Japan. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they found that baby floating on a mattress mm -hmm. in the ocean. Mm -hmm. this, this is a real life story. But that baby, you know, wouldn't have known what to do if that mattress wasn't there. And I think there's a, even in the situation, even in our situation, I think getting back to spirit, I think there is a, something else that took place here. It's not only, as I tell my parents, we give them the divine rights to be able to save their life through their physicality. Something else happens if a child of two years old has the ability and patience to float on their back for that amount of time. Although we, we make them float on their back for um, extended amount of time, four hours is a long That's stretch. That's a long time. So you have to think, it's a, it's a God thing there. Yeah. Plus us infusing him with the physical ability to do it, mm -hmm. and then um, maybe he would have gotten tired and someone sitting there and holding him, just the same as the baby in Japan on the mattress. Mm -hmm. So that, that is one thing that you also do. You have your swim school, yes, and there's a website that we're going to put on the, at the end of the show that people can find out about that for their children. So that's one aspect of you. And the other aspect, uh, which we're going to really concentrate on, is your healing method. And if you could kind of tell us a, uh, a minute or two about the healing method that you use, which a lot of people call Rolfing, but you call it something else, and how that helps people. Okay, well, well, first and foremost, um, when, when you think of Rolfing, you think of uh, discomfort. You think of, uh, um, that seems to what comes into people's head and they think of it just being a physical thing from my standpoint it's as energetic as it is physical so I put I marry both of those together when I'm when I'm working on people but to give just a rundown and it, it there's a there'll be an extended rundown you know if people go to my website but um, it's working in the connective tissue of the body it's working in the fascia of the body and please take note that every time we've fallen as a child Every time that we have uh, uh, stood in a wrong way, it's creating signals throughout our body which send out collagen fibers to reset our body in this, uh, in this as Otto Rolf said, being at war with gravity. Hmm. So uh, what we do is we go in and we address those areas. We align the body through um, hooking into the, the tissue hooking into the bones themselves because a lot of tissue likes to hold itself around the bone mm. and the um, the connective tissue itself is actually has the tensegrity strength to bend bone this is how mm. strong it is and this is why people they get caught they hold themselves they hold their shoulders back they walk in strange kind of ways and they they start to hump over like this mm. they can be helped through a connective tissue. I think um, chiropractic care 
and, um, and, and yoga and uh, raw thing, also known as structural integration, which I've been trained in. All of those, and, and, and even a meditative practice, all of those together can create well-being. And we have a lot of people in the world that are, are like this. So how is, mm -hmm. what is this, just from a physical standpoint, it doesn't look comfortable, but how does that make someone feel psychologically? How does it make somebody feel emotionally? And mm -hmm. what came first? Did, did the physical aspect of, and you have to look at this, and when you're analyzing somebody, did did the did the worry of a child or the worry of of losing a wife or something did that come first which started closing them down energetically so the which emotional thing that happened right affects their body that's what you're saying it, yeah, it has the ability. Or was it was it a car accident where uh, fear was caught in the body? There's a thing called red light, re, red light, green light reflex, where someone's being nice and calm, and then uh, they do these experiments where somebody comes up behind them and shoots a gun. <laughs> It automatically does that. People walk around with these things caught in their body, and they're so unconscious that they don't really um, they don't really they don't really see it as that anymore. Mm -hmm. It just becomes a part of their norm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's it in a in a nutshell. But we take people through a recipe of ten sessions, and um, ten you, sessions from one part of their body to the next. I mean, from A to literally A to Z. I, I mean, one part to the top, the bottom to the top. Or mm -hmm. is there a do you, do you, where do you actually start? We we start within the uh, um, within the ribs. We start on their breathing because people don't breathe correctly. Full and for, uh, full and full stop. So if we can um, allow them to start to breathe consciousness through their body, hmm. that's a great start to to work with and we start to open their ribs up and then we give them homework they'll go home after the first session and we'll say work on your breathing just work on your breathing and then a second session we work in the interosseous membrane of the of the foot and we try to realign their foot so they're walking through their through their inner arch and they're walking in a different way just work on your feet we don't want to give them too much too soon and we kind of through the 10 series have this culmination where it all ties back up and it comes together and we uh, um, we have a we have a finished product at the end of the day so mm -hmm. yeah. so the typical reaction somebody does 10 sessions yes, this may be an hour each or maybe longer I tend to um, counsel and uh, talk and really get to feel people on every session for 25 30 minutes and I may be we may be on the table for an hour and a half Wow. You know, because I don't want to just put people on a table. I want to feel. If they want to share something with me, I want them to feel comfortable with me because we're, you know, when you touch people's bodies, you're getting information. When you touch people's bodies, you're taking them to a, uh, to a level that they may not be used to. So you want them to be able to feel comfortable, especially men that uh, have been repressed. You know, women don't have a problem crying, but mm -hmm. men, you know, this big, Maori fella come in and uh, you know and work on them and they're like you know I'm going to show him how tough I am and mm. they actually repress themselves and go deeper within so I want them I want to we have a masculine and a feminine body mm. and I want them to be able to it's okay for them to not always be caught in that toughness you know to mm. be uh, to be mm -hmm. to, to, to be well rounded to come back more into the balance so after somebody that is there a typical after somebody does the 10 session series typically they feel what they feel more aligned they feel more open they feel more potential they feel more clear they feel more of an ability to express through their through their emotions it's uh, generally uh, sometimes a thing that can shift people depending on where they started at now mm -hmm. it can shift people to make radical changes in their life that they've been wanting to mm -hmm. because it's been held in their body and then they have this uh, new awakening so to speak mm -hmm. and it uh, gives them um, new abilities and options to be able to uh, you know in the bible it says and in, in many other cultures we look at the body as our temple right mm -hmm. it's sacred our body is our body is sacred so mm -hmm. we need to not only 
eat good food. We need to not only meditate. We need to not only, uh, um, you know, try to be kind to people, although we're human. We are of God and we are of uh, humanity, but we need to take care of the physical part of our body and to breathe consciousness through every cell of our body and to be grounded through Mother Earth, to be extended through Father Sky, Rangi Nui. So all of this, all of what you just said, is incorporated in your work, whether it be an hour and a half on each session, and they can have a great release, and it can be an emotional release, it can be a physical release, it may mean their life changes also, it may mean a transition for them, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And it may be different from each person depending on what they're going through and why they came to it. If I saw a professional hockey player, he may become specifically for physical things, and that is fine. I will meet them where they're at because a lot of hockey players especially have a lot of concussions, and mm -hmm. their cranium gets really, really caught. So mm -hmm. you work in their cranium, and you work in their neck, and you work mm -hmm. in their body to, to help them feel more, and they may not go to that other level. I don't want to mm -hmm. scare people off by saying, I, I expect big, tough men to come into my, uh, to my room and cry, because it's not necessarily like that. It's an option, and I work with people. I don't want them to feel uncomfortable in the space that they're right. in. Well, we do have a human being here, Dr. Kirk Jones, who uh, can come up, and he graciously has volunteered <laughs> to uh, be uh, your, your client, your patient, and you just take over and tell him what you would like to do. Shall I uh, have a look at him first? Yes, or, why uh, don't you go take a look at him? Yeah, so, uh, so, and if yeah, the camera that's can that's uh, so get I think to here. not get too analytical into this, we're just going to pick an air since we have such a short period of time. And you can see he's got twist in his torso. One arm is definitely longer than his other arm. And if you could imagine how we could maybe lift him up through his torso and by lifting him up and taking twist out of his torso and by working in his his chest and up through here how it can help his his scapula behind to help balance back through his body and um, that I think that is probably enough said and uh, let's get you to put your head on the table and uh, on your back and then uh, scoot down just slightly there mr. Dr. Jones, and uh, bring your knees up. Here. We have our knees up because we want the lumbars to be able to sit back. And generally with people, um, their lumbars are too far forward. So what, what I plan on doing with Kirk today is uh, generally what we were doing the first session. I'll just give you a, a, bit, of, a bit of what we're going to do. Um, is we will work on his breathing again to, to help people to breathe as I, I as I said before so I'm gonna work with him around his xiphoid process and into his ribs there to help to lift his body up and also to help his breathing and then I'm gonna work through his uh, through his ribs on both sides and maybe even where you won't be able to see it around to his uh, spinous processes in his back. I'm gonna do that right now and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. I'm just gonna bring your arm up just like that. And I sit comfortably, comfortably on the table. Now within the line of work, I've been trained by my wonderful teacher, John Latz, how to, uh, how to work in the body without us having to stress in the body. So, uh, you'll see I'm not going to be shaking. I'm going to be coming from the place that we want people to be able to come from in the work, which is coming from their core, not from their sleeve, which will tend to be really uh, shaky. And if you remember back to our first, um, our first episode, the sleeve is like the superficial wetsuit layer of the body. And if you can uh, be able to incorporate and come from both of those areas, um, it helps you to uh, energetically be more present for your client, and uh, and they they will feel this as well. So um, I shift and move my body um, depending on what I'm feeling. Now um, my intention, we work through consciousness, we work work through intention. Although this may seem like I just have my hands on uh, Doctor 
um, Jones here. Um, actually in his ribs right now and I'm hooking into his superficial layer here and this is not only helping him through his chest it's actually helping him straight through his back if you feel it in your back can you just nod Mr. Jones Dr. Jones yeah okay And then we will just give him a moment to uh, reassess and just to feel what that new space feels like and just breathe into your breathe into your chest just from that one move. There you go. And you can see he has, even after one move, he has more of a volume within his chest. So I'm just going to move his arm down like this, and I'm going to work uh, around his ribs. And this is a, a technique... Uh, that we use um, and it's called hydrating I'm actually on his ribs right now and this can be kind of uh, intense and you know and if, if clients come to me and they think oh that's too much well I may change I may just come back to this and I may just hold there And again, I'm hooking. There, he has a layer of fascia that's right superficial to his xiphoid process and his ribs that needs to be worked on. That's going to help him to be able to not only breathe better, but to help him to be able to open his ribs up um, upwards and also for him to be able to breathe through his back. So uh, in order to uh, facilitate that more, I'm going to come underneath and my underhand is going to be um, in his, close to his spine. So now I have a very dynamic move which connects through his body. I'm working on the front of his ribs and the back of his ribs at the same time. So I want you to breathe my fingers on down further to the table. There you go, right there. Take a breath, and you can see he has more volume on that side just after that one move. Um, so now I'm going to stand up. This to me is very freeing. People carry a lot of stuff within their chest, and it's normally intense to be worked in there, but it's about overcoming the... Uh, what you say is intense and you know as as we say within the swim business too it's about um, letting go of um, our story or our drama and just uh, going going into this and I'm hooking straight into his uh, into his uh, sternum here where there's a lot of caught fascia and I'm just allowing it to melt and open I'm not forcing my way into his body I'm allowing it to open And I'm just giving it a bit of a, hey, friend, I need you to open. <laughs> so is there a uh, spiritual part going on that, uh, that we can't see or you yes. feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's going on with Kurt right now from what I see is there's a thing called a line, and that's the vertical line, which what we're talking on uh, mm -hmm. in the body. There's, there's the energetic aspect of that, which is starting to activate with him right here and it's starting to come up and I can feel that I'm an empath so I can generally when people come into the office I feel what they're uh, what they're feeling in their body I'll be walking down the road or driving down the road and I'll go lady over there running has got a backache or something you know I I can oh. generally feel that and I, I generally think that all of us have the ability to do that um, I think we just have not um, been able to disassociate with what's ours and what's not Mm -hmm. So I'm coming over to this side now just because you want to create balance. You're not going to work on either side the same. 
but you want to create balance in the body. And um, in fact, with his shoulder, he, uh, as I talked about when he was standing, this shoulder here sat in a different way. It was holding more than the other side. And I can feel how his shoulder is, um, how it's holding through his ribs right here. I can feel that. And I have a good grab on his, uh, on his tissue. You, you imagine a tablecloth hmm. on a table. You pull one end of the tablecloth and it affects all the way up. Well, I'm affecting straight into his lower back and into his hip just from doing this move right here. And that's why it's so unique and different. And I feel that every human being at, at different levels needs, really needs this work. Um, and it doesn't matter how old you are, young you are, it, it's all available. I've worked on people in their 80s and 90s. Wow. And I've worked on babies. And babies, too. And babies. But, you know, with babies, obviously, you can't do this. You have to come more from an energetic approach and go back to um, lighter hands and allow the, uh, allow the body to open and really feel and hear on a different level. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing right now as I'm, as I'm working with him. You know, I'm, I'm hearing things in the body, so um, that's, uh, so just, um, I'm not sure how much time we have. We have about a minute and a half. Okay, so, so <laughs> since, since we have a minute and a half, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come up and I'm just going to give his neck a, and everybody, they come in, they go, oh, it's my shoulders, it's my neck. So, um, we'll, uh, and I know Dr. Uh, the doctor here gets a lot of chiropractic. Dr. Jones adjust. gives a lot. Of he gives a lot and he probably is. Uh, so I'm just going to pull on his neck right here. And what I'm doing here is my intention is I can already feel his his spine lengthening through this oh. and his neck lengthening right through. I'm hooking straight into his uh, cervical spine and with the intention on the, the back of his uh, occipital, which is the the cranial bones um, at the back of your skull and I'm just sitting here and I'm just giving a uh, light pull. Okay. And well, there you go. And if this was a true full session, you'd probably be working on him for an hour, hour and a half. An hour, an hour and a half. Okay. I'd be working on him for at least an hour and a half, and I would have been a lot more uh, um, thorough about what 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 I was doing. Yes. Right, and I, as I understand, this is this is a little different because you're talking a lot for the camera. Yes. A lot of this would be silence in the in the real, the real deal here. But I want to remind everybody in our audience that this is Brendan Sweetman, and that there, we will be having the website not only for his structural integration work but also for the swimming for babies and thank you transitions body mind spirit thank you very much brendan have a good night